Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to quickly build large props. If you missed the last how-to episode, which was about how to use supports, you can watch that here. Or if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe down below where you can join the rest of the hacker community and talk about all sorts of things 3D printings and stay up to date about more how-tos, big builds, and other meetups and things that we'll be doing. Now let's dive in. Before you get started, make sure you've watched or read our previous how-tos, how to print outside your build volume, or how to print with a larger nozzle, because both of those were used to make this prop. So both of these are printed on a 3D printer with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle, which meant that it could go a lot quicker, but it also meant that I had to take some considerations into the print settings. So I did use the Pulse HV because it does come with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle and it made it really easy to be able to set this up and have all of that taken care of for me. But you could also use the Volcano Hot End on your printer or a Morris Truder on a Lulzbot Taz 6 or some other combination of parts to be able to do the same sort of idea of just having a larger nozzle. Now with these parts, I'm setting myself to have the restriction that it's only one week to get it printed. It's print, sand, paint, all that is only one week. Because in this scenario, I'm saying that I want to cosplay ready for Saturday and I don't have all the time to spend on just the axis. Because if I only work on this, I want to have the rest of the costume. So I'm going to say that I'm going to be doing the rest of my work in the office and then I'm going to be having this being done in between there to really simulate that there's not a lot of time being spent on these, so there are some corners that are going to be cut to make it work, but it's a way to be able to have a project done and ready for the weekend without having any sort of stress on the other parts of it. So, with that said, let's dive into it. So we've got all the parts laid out here, printed on the Pulse HV with a 0.4 millimeter layer height, 1.2 millimeter nozzle means they went pretty quickly, but I wanted to test everything first before I got to any gluing, make sure that everything fit. The rod went in smoothly, the pieces fit together okay, but there were some gaps. So I sanded them down using a bench grinder, and just whittling away at it, wasn't trying to be too careful. So I'll grab another steel rod, just from the bin, nothing in particular. Check the fit and see that there's still a little too much space, so I'll chop it down, making sure to wear eye protection while I'm doing this. And just a little grind and it's gone, and then I can reassemble this and see that it fits together just right. So as these parts have been printing, I have been test fitting them and noticing that the connector pieces that go between them all are just a little bit too tall at the print quality I have them at. So while they do fit in snugly, they, they don't go flush so that these two parts have a very slight gap between them. So what I've done is I've just went into the lab, used the bench grinder, some sandpaper to flatten them out and make them just a little bit shorter. And now these fit together a lot nicer. But then from here, I still have to put the rod through the center of here. So I just found this rod in the lab. No idea how long it is or what diameter it is. Could be eight millimeters. Uh, but then I can just put that in here. I flattened off these pieces and their connectors too. And there we go. So that, that's pretty good. I am going to want to use some five minute epoxy in each of these joints just so it has a bit more hold on here, but this is a pretty good start. I took a sheet of aluminum foil, folded it up to make a plate, and then made some 5-minute epoxy, mixed it together, and I'm going to use that on all the joints. Now, I could have used a bowl, I could have used a paper plate, I could have used the sheet that was on here. This was just a little cleaner to put together. Now, I did use a failed print to rub this on. I could have used a popsicle stick or some special tool on here, but this made it easy, although you want to make sure you put things together the right way when you squeeze it together and wipe off the excess. Now I'm just using my finger, but paper towel would work fine here too. And I'm gonna make sure to make get this all over every surface of it and really clamp it down together and then wipe away the excess. I'm gonna take some cables, just some wire that we had, twist it up so I have something to hold this from, and then I can hang it later while this is drying. Now I'm gonna mix up a batch of XTC 3D and I'm going to apply it to both sides of the axe. And you're going to notice that there's a 2 to 1 ratio between them. Part A is two times as much as part B. You really want to make sure you get as much of part A out of its cup as you can, and then once you pour in part B, the clock's ticking, and you got to be sure to really get that mix in and applied. Otherwise, once it starts turning gummy, you just got to stop. Make sure you get into all the tiny crevices that's in the part, just to make sure everything gets smooth and you don't have layer lines left out. 
At this point, I'm also holding it by hands, so then I can hang it up and get all the surfaces as well. Now that it's hung up, I can let it sit here, and we're good. So normally this is for taking pictures of products, but it actually makes a really good spot to suspend both of the axes. Now because the XTC 3D is still wet, it's gonna take a couple hours to cure, so we're gonna wait that time. But between then, while it's dripping, it's at least gonna drip and collect at either the tip or the back of the ax, and then that's gonna be a lot easier to sand than if it were on its side, where it's going to get flat spots, or it's gonna just have drips all along it. So suspending your part is gonna work a lot better just to get a smoother finish, and now I can just leave it here without worrying about it for the next couple hours. So it's been a couple hours, they're fully cured now, they're hard, I'm not gonna get any sort of resin on my hands, so it's about ready for sanding. Using some 220 grit sandpaper, I went over the entire axe, making sure to get as much of the details as I could cleaned up, and try to break down some of those layer lines that were left behind from the original print and the XTC 3D. I'm gonna make sure to go over the entire thing just one time, and then pay attention to any parts that may need a little more attention. I'm not trying to knock off all of the layer lines, but just enough to keep it a little more smooth, and then I think that did a pretty good job. So I've gone over the entire axe with 220 grit sandpaper, and it's done a pretty good job at taking down all the high spots, but there's still quite a few low spots on this. If I wanted to take more time on this, I would probably go back in, fill this, maybe more XTC or Bondo or some filler putty, and try and fill this back in, but the whole goal of this is to do this with a tight time span of how long you actually can spend working on this. So I'm gonna call this good, but now I'm gonna go over it with some primer and the base coat that I want this in. So I found a black primer. I'll go over this. Once that dries, I'll tape it up and then do the final color. I wanna make sure I get a really good gloss black base because this is going to be the base for the rest of the colors. I'm only gonna do a light dusting, not a full one. And then when I'm taping, I'm only taping small sections of the handle black and the rest of it will be the other color. Now I don't need to be too particular since it is just some minor detail work and it's going to be where my hands are most of the time. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time making sure that these are the same length and the same width and I'm just looking to keep all of this covered up. Once I have the little strips done on the handle here, I'll focus on the longer sections on either side of the handle. And for that I'm just going to take a strip and cut it in half and then I can apply it and cut some smaller strips and bend them around the corners. But nothing too special, just some regular tape. So it's Thursday morning and I've taped up everything I want to stay black. So Tuesday afternoon, painted in black. Thursday morning, I gave it enough time to make sure it cures. Because what can happen when you put tape over uncured paint is that it can peel up with it. So luckily I have black PLA underneath. It may not have been too noticeable, but if I had printed in any other color, I probably would have seen where it ripped up. Now, because this is supposed to be with a, uh, it's supposed to be a rush job, I'm not too concerned about making sure that the lines on the tape are perfect. There's plenty of spots where it's not great and I would probably go back and do it again, but to stay true to the original idea of just trying to get this finished, I'm happy with this. There's definitely spots I see where I could have done more finishing, like maybe more XTC 3D or more sanding, use some filler primer or spot putties. It's good enough because what I can do is I can hide a lot of this with battle damage and most people aren't going to get too close to see that sort of issue. So now I have the paint on here, now I have the tape on here, let's go out and do some painting. So with this paint, I didn't want it to be too shiny, I wanted it to have a little more definition. So I did a light misting over the entire thing and then tried to hit some other parts where I wanted it a bit shinier. And then I just left it to dry for a little bit. So it's Friday now, the paint's dry, I'm gonna take off the painter's tape, but I'm not gonna call it quits there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually weather it using some acrylic paints that I mix with some water, just gonna give both of the axes a whole wash. And what that will do is make it look a little worn, look like it's been seeing some action out in some forest and doing some damage on orcs or whatever. But not only will it make it look a lot more authentic and cooler, it will also kind of hide the sins that you had while you were making the rest of it. So like I could have sanded it a lot longer than I did, if I'm just gonna weather it, then you may not notice those sort of imperfections nearly as clearly as if it were just like this, because the gold really highlights all the little imperfections. But if I fill it back over with some black and browns and oranges to make it look kind of muddy, you're not really gonna see it anymore. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the tape, mix some stuff up and start weathering. So first I'm gonna mix up a little bit of brown with a tiny bit of yellow and then add some water to it. And this is what's gonna be sort of a mud wash to make it look like it's seen some actual combat, it's been outside, it has some character to it. And I'm gonna to wanna to make sure to get this in all of the crevices, get it within the handle, 
get it in all the spots that dirt might accumulate and not really get cleaned off. Because now that I wipe with it, I'm not gonna be careful to really get in there. Then I'm also gonna make up some black with a little bit of brown and then add a lot of water as well. And this is just to have some contrasting colors instead of just one big bold brown, there's a little bit of darkness to it as well. Again, really light, doesn't need to be super thick. Just wipe it off. So here we have one X, which I've done no weathering to. It's just gloss gold and gloss black spray paint. But here's the other one where I've done a little bit of brown mixed with a tiny bit of yellow and a lot of water and another coat with black and a little bit of brown and water mixed in. So it has a lot more definition to it. It's got a bit more going on with it than this, this gold one. While the gold does look pretty, it doesn't look real because of just how shiny it is. There isn't a lot of things in real life that are just super clean. There's always an element of dirt to it, especially if it's something like a weapon from a fantasy game. It's going to have a level of wear and tear from fighting and just all sorts of like, oh, you found this ax in a dungeon that hasn't been seen in a thousand years. It's not gonna be clean. It's gonna be dirty, grimy. It's gonna have a bit of dullness to it. But at the same time, I do like the shine that this one has, whereas this one is a lot duller because of all the paints we've added. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna weather this one equally as this one, but I'm gonna take some gold spray paint and just highlight some of the edges just to make them pop a bit more, and that'll prevent it from looking just quite as muted and dull that it is right now. So let's go ahead and weather this one up and then we'll get back to weathering this one. Now that I've weathered the second axe, I'm gonna add just a little bit of highlights to everything. Spraying some more of that gold spray paint onto just another brush and try and get it to highlight those edges to give it a bit more of a three-dimensional look instead of just the flat, dull look that the weathering has given to it because it is supposed to be real metal. And there we go. Now I've got two complete axes in less than a week. All in all, this took 15 hours to put together, and that includes the nine hours of print time. So it took me six hours of finishing, and that's, I guess, three hours per ax to get it done, because I was able to apply the XTC all at once and all that. So pretty quick to get these done. They aren't the prettiest axes, but it was something that had a deadline, so I was willing to cut those corners. Now, you could absolutely spend the time to make this look really clean and do this with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. You would just have to acknowledge that it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's absolutely doable to be able to make a prop on Monday and have it started then and have it finished Friday evening. And that's even with not having all of your attention focused on it. So if you or anyone else in the hacker community wanna share with me what you've created using this video or any previous video, feel free to tag me on social media or even tag the Matter Hackers account. I'm out for Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's, and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.